Hello and welcome back to another video guys. So the topic of this video is association analysis, also known as market basket analysis. This one is an interesting technique and it is used by some of the leading companies of the world. So let's see what we are going to cover in this video. We will start by developing a basic understanding of association analysis and then we'll see a few important terminologies associated with it. And then we'll see a priori algorithm which is the main mechanism behind this technique. And then as usual, we'll do one assignment in R. So this is how we are going to proceed. So all right, let's start and see what is association analysis. Let us suppose a seller sells different products. For example, clocks, fruits, bakery, gaming products and beverages. Now they are interested to know if there is any relationship in sale of one product with another. So is there a chance that they are bought together? This information will help the sellers in recommending such products to the customers. Well, we all must have seen such recommendations on Amazon when we buy any product. Or even Netflix recommends us movies based on our preference. So all this is possible using association analysis. So association analysis or market basket analysis is an unsupervised machine learning technique and it is used to make product recommendations by identifying products that are frequently bought together. This is what we have just discussed. So what it does is it looks at the purchase coincidence and investigates whether two products are being purchased together and whether the purchase of one product increases the likelihood of purchasing the other product. Now so many companies are using it. Just to name a few, Last.fm and Internet Radio, also known as Streaming Radio or Web Radio, continuously collects the data on the listening preferences of the user and then performs association analysis for recommendations. Similarly, we have already discussed about Amazon and Netflix. They also use it to make the recommendation about their product or movies to its subscribers based on their purchase history and viewing history. So this is what in a nutshell association analysis is. Now let's see some important terminologies that are used in association analysis. First we have the association rule. A typical association rule appears as A to B. Here A is called as antecedent and B is called as consequent. This means consequent item on the right hand side is frequently purchased with the item on the left hand side that is antecedent. Then we have support of the association rule. Now support in general is the frequency of occurrence and for an association rule it is the chance of simultaneous occurrence of A and B. Now support is given by the probability of occurrence of A and B together which is the number of transactions containing both A and B divided by the total transaction. Next we have confidence or strength of an association rule. This defines the likeliness of occurrence of consequent B given that A antecedent has already occurred. The formula for confidence is shown here. It is the support of A and B divided by support of A. Or in other words, it is the probability of occurrence of A and B together divided by probability of occurrence of A. Now if it is a small number, then relationship between antecedent A and consequent B is not relevant. After that, we have lift of an association rule. Now, if lift of A to B is defined as the ratio of confidence of A to B divided by support of B. The formula for lift is also shown here on the screen. Now, what does lift tells us? Let's say lift is equal to 1. In this case, A and B are independent and hence no rule can be derived from them. If lift is greater than 1, then A and B are dependent on each other and the degree of which is given by the lift value. Similarly, if lift is less than 1, then presence of A will have negative effect on B. After that, we have leverage. Now, leverage computes the difference between the observed frequency of A and B appearing together and frequency that would be expected if A and B were independent. The value of leverage ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. 
The formula for leverage is also shown here on the screen. So positive value of leverage shows dependence. A negative value of leverage shows negative impact of antecedent on the consequent. And a value of zero indicates independence. After that, we have conviction. Now, conviction is the ratio of the expected frequency that A occurs without B. In other words, it is the frequency that the rule has made an incorrect prediction if A and B are independent. Conviction of A to B is given by the formula as shown here. Now, obviously, you don't have to remember all these formulas. I am just showing you so that you are aware of these things. Next term is frequent item set. These are the item sets, means antecedent and consequent, whose support is greater than or equal to minimum support threshold. Now minimum support threshold is defined by the user. So item sets is the collection of antecedent and consequent, whose support is greater than or equal to minimum support threshold, which is defined by the user. Then we have strong rules. Strong rules are those rules in which say a rule A to B has a support and confidence that satisfies minimum support and minimum confidence requirement. Again minimum support and minimum confidence is defined by the user. Then we have incidence matrix. The data that we use here is arranged in a large matrix called incidence matrix. Now the data is so huge that it runs into GBs and TBs. For example, Rows could be shopper, number of trips, and columns could represent different products, etc. So if we have a data that has such information, that will be called an incidence matrix. So these were the few terms that you would come across often when you will do market basket analysis or association analysis. You can note them down somewhere, they will come handy. Now the next important concept is the a priori algorithm. So the algorithm that works behind the association analysis is the a priori algorithm. Let's see how does this a priori algorithm works. So, so far we have defined rules where there is a single antecedent causing a consequent. We can extend this further to the case when the antecedent is a list that is given a list of products that has already been bought. What are the chances that the consequent gets bought? So let's say we have two products as shown here that are already bought and we want to know what is the chance that the consequent is also bought. So here we have to consider pairs or triples of the product and study the relationship. But this is not a good approach because there must be some rules whose support and confidence would not cross the minimum threshold. Hence we could use a priori algorithm which will help us prune the rules based on minimum threshold of support and confidence. So a priori algorithm says that if a transaction is frequent, for example a transaction containing soda, wrap and donut, then its subset, say soda and donut, will also be frequent. Now we can phrase this as any subset of a frequent item set must also be frequent or no superset of any infrequent item set can be frequent. Recall frequent item sets are those item sets whose support is greater than or equal to minimum support threshold set by the user. This means if soda, wrap and donut has a support greater than or equal to minimum threshold, then its subset soda and donut or donut or wrap etc. will also have a support greater than or equal to minimum threshold. Now if a rule does not have a good support and confidence, then we can prune the rule. So that is the basis on which a priori algorithm works. Let us now see the steps involved in a priori algorithm. Here I am using a very simple example to demonstrate. Let's see we have a transaction data. So for association analysis, we use transaction data. Something like the one shown here. It has a transaction ID and has information related to transaction. So now for this example, I have used 5 products and marked them 1 if they are present in transaction and 0 if otherwise. So our aim here is to check which items are bought together. 
So first we will create a frequency table which will capture the number of times a product is bought. Then we will set a threshold. Say we will include entries for which support is greater than 50%. So in our case it will be 3 and above. Then any entry that has a support of less than 3 we will remove it. So from this table we will remove T. Now we will create all possible pairs from the leftover items and we will get a table like this. The support values are from the original table. So if you see milk and eggs were bought together 4 times. Similarly milk and bread were bought together 3 times and so on. Here M denotes milk, E denotes egg, B denotes bread, J denotes jam and so on. Now again we will drop the entries that has a support of less than 50%. So we will drop milk jam and bread jam. Now we will be left with these 4 entries. So either we can conclude the frequently bought pairs from this table based on the support or we can further check for triple combinations. So upon checking for triple combination, we will get these three possible triplet combinations from our previous table. Milk, eggs and bread, milk, eggs and jam, milk, bread and jam. Now again we will use the minimum support criteria. So we can see from the minimum support criteria that milk, egg and bread is the frequently purchased item. So this was a very quick and simple example for demonstration. But in reality we will have a huge list and there will be many many such combinations. Basically real life problems would be very complex. But I hope you have got the idea how a priori algorithm works. Anyways all this will be done by R. So we don't have to worry about the steps. But we should at least know how the algorithm is working. So that was all from association analysis guys. Now it really feels good to see all these topics check marked one by one. Alright so let's see what we have discussed in this section. So we started by discussing what is association analysis. After that we saw few important terminologies. Now if you are feeling a bit confused then please go back to the video and see those terms again. And then we also discussed what a priori algorithm is. A priori algorithm is the main mechanism behind this technique. And we also see how does a priori algorithm works. So that was all from association analysis. Now let's head straight to the assignment. So I'll catch you up in the next video.